Welcome to Doxadeo City Changers. Let's consider this question today. What is the deepest desire of the human soul? I think if you think about the desires of humanity, it would include desires to be safe, desires to be fed, desires to be happy, desires to live a purposeful life. But if you study humanity right across the world and through the ages and the decades, of our existence, you will see that the deepest desire of the human soul is to live with a God connection. We see it expressed in the incredible variety of religions and the different ways that people worship different things even. I was in Jerusalem once and I was so stirred by the, the lengths that people would go to, to live connected to their God. Some of the big religions of the world culminate in that city and you find the conflict of these different ideologies. And basically, it just reveals the human soul's deepest desire 
I want to live connected to my Creator. For us as Christians, we study the Lord Jesus Christ and we anchor everything that we need and that we desire in Him. So I want to start with the proclamation that the angel made in Matthew 1 verse 22 and 23. All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel. It is such a common verse, but today I want to take you to the meaning of the word Emmanuel. It basically means God is with us. To me, that is such an important statement and it's the first revelation that Christ brought to this planet. Is that God is not hiding away somewhere. He is brought out into the open. That's also confirmed in John chapter 1 verse 18. Jesus says, I bring him out into the open so that you can know him. And his reputation, his name was Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So much of our search for our God connection takes us to so-called holy places. But the Bible actually turns that around. It says that God is with us in our everyday human endeavors. There is this incredible promise that he's with us. He's not in buildings. He's not with buildings or with temples. He is with people. So let me throw that promise straight back at you today and ask you the question, if the promise is that God is with you, how real is that in your life? Do you have a practical testimony to the promise that God is with us? So let's, let's take one of the characters in the Bible as we study this today and as we open our heart to this promise and say, Lord, this is what I want in my life. I want to take you to a character in the Old Testament with the name of Jacob. Jacob was not a perfect man. It's very clear that he connived around so many of his deeper desires and success that he wanted for himself at the cost of family relationships. And what is interesting is that in Genesis 28, as he is running away from the mistakes that he made, he fell, fell asleep and, and he had a dream. He dreams about God and he then, in 28 verse 15 of the book of Genesis, we see these words. The Lord says, Behold, Jacob, I am with you. And I will keep you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this promised land. I will not leave you. I will, done, I will make sure that it is done what I have promised to you. So Jacob wakes up. And then his reaction to this dream is so interesting to me and it echoes what is said about Jesus. He is Emmanuel. God is with us. So it's interesting to me that Jacob woke from his sleep and he said, without a doubt, the Lord is in this place, but I did not realize it. In the story of Jacob, I think one of the battles of humanity is captured. The fact that God is with us. That is not where the problem is. Maybe the problem is with our awareness of the fact that he is with us. Jacob became aware in spite of his human failure, in spite of all the mistakes he became aware of the fact that the God of the universe still makes effort with every human being on this planet. His presence is not deserved by our own good deeds. His presence is a promise that is available to all of humanity. It was true in the Old Testament. It was true in Jesus' life. It is true after that. It is true today. It will be true tomorrow. God is with us. The question is, are we aware of that? And then 
Genesis 28 verse 17, Jacob was afraid and he said, how fearful and awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God and the gateway to heaven. I think there is a just a glimmer of the promise that came to fulfillment in Jesus Christ is that the house of God is not in a temple that was built with human hands. God's presence is available everywhere on this planet. And the fact is that any place can become a place of connection, a place of meeting. So as I study the life of Jacob, who did not deserve this, I realize that all of humanity actually have the same opportunity to experience God in various places in our lives and on this planet where we can also come to the awareness that He truly is with us. And then we can respond to that reality and literally experience the house of God in many places where we maybe could not have imagined that that could be true. So let me just reinforce that again. The Bible is very clear on this, that the house of God is not a temple. It is not a church building. The house of God is a place of meeting where the human soul connects to their creator. Jesus confirmed this in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, with the words, where two or three are gathered in my name. There I am in their midst. So he is everywhere, but it is true that when people come together in the name of Jesus, there's something special of the awareness of God's presence that causes us to feel that he's close. But basically, it is just our awareness that lifts to a new level. So when we talk about experiencing God's presence, I am convinced that we as human beings are very connected to our senses. And it is true, it is part of our design, it's part of the promise of God that our senses can be stimulated and that gives us the sense of awareness of the presence of God. I know that our awareness is heightened, for instance, when we are in a place of worship and there is worship music playing and people sing and they glorify God, there's something that happens through our senses. It's the sound. It is the experience of people around you that lifts the awareness in your own soul that God is here. And I've experienced this so many times. We would just be singing a song in a church and suddenly, at one moment in that song, there is a particular word, a particular phrase. There's a particular moment. Sometimes it's in the music. Sometimes it's in the silence. But suddenly, my soul is just open to the reality that God is here. God is here. God is Emmanuel. God is with us. And what I'm trying to do today is to activate that desire in your heart to find the moments where that happens, where I realize that God is close. There is a special awareness of his presence. Let me take you somewhere else. So we've spoken about this experience when people sing together and they worship. But I think we also experience it when our soul is truly in wonder of something that is beautiful. If you are somewhere by the ocean or you're somewhere on the mountain and there's the serenity of nature and the beauty either of a sunset or the, uh, including the colors of nature and just the magnificence of how God put this planet together. Sometimes just in sitting and beholding, sitting and studying the wonder of the universe. Something happens on the inside of the human soul where you suddenly feel the Lord is here. So I believe that is how he made us. He made us to be experiential beings. 
And God's presence is not just a theory. God's presence is an experience that he promises, I will be with you to the ends of the earth. That is a factual reality. But still there are those moments in worship, in nature. And um, some other examples could, for instance, be moments of inspiration. You would sit and listen to somebody who's playing a musical instrument. I recently had an experience like this with somebody who was playing the violin. And there was something so magnificent. I was so inspired by the music and the artist. And it took me to a place where the inspiration transcended the person and the instrument. It's not just the violinist and the music. It's this realization that God did all of this. He gave that person the gift and the determination to develop that gift. And the beauty of that moment was so inspirational that I had an experience, a sense, an awareness that the Lord is there, the Lord is here. So I would love to encourage you today to love God's presence in the sense that when you do experience it, that you give it all of your attention. So for the last couple of minutes, I do want to end this talk today that God is with us. is not just so that we can experience it, It is also because God's presence is the anchor that the human soul needs to function uh, with all of the challenges that we face. And one of the big authors of the Bible by the name of David wrote Psalm 23 and he talks about how God's closeness in his life has become the anchor of his life. I don't want God to be with me just so that I can feel him. I want God to be with me. I want to be aware of his presence so that that can become the very anchor that gives me the stability and the strength that I need to manage all of the challenges of life. The Lord is my shepherd. David was a shepherd and he knew that as a shepherd, he went everywhere with the sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. It immediately implies proximity. God is with me and he's close to me and he is committed to me. And then he goes through a list of needs. He says, I will not want. And he makes a list of needs like I need refreshment. I need to be fed. I need to be guided. I need strength against my enemies. I I need hope when I go through tough times. You see a list of the needs of humanity and David is anchoring all of those needs in the fact that the Lord is my shepherd. So he starts there, but I think where he ends with Psalm 23 is the most revealing statement. He says these words, therefore I will live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. We know that David was a king. He was supposed to live in the palace. He was supposed to live on the battlefield with his, with his um, generals. And as the king was leading the armies, there was an understanding that the house of the Lord was not a place. It was an experience. So as we consider the promise, God is with us. I pray that you will find him in those special moments of every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday through to Sunday, but that you will also grow to the point where you experience Psalm 23 in reality. God is with me and that anchors my humanity. On the program today, we have Altus Meyer, and he has such an exciting story to share with his involvement with the street store. So Altus, it's so great to have you on the program, and we're excited to hear your story. Thank you for having me on the program, Joe. Now, before we jump in, I think we can often just get into the meat of the story and, and hear the nuts and bolts, but all of us want to get to know you a bit better. So fill us in, who is Altus? Well, Joe, that's actually a very interesting question, and I feel 
that when someone asks you that question, you usually say what you do. But I like breaking it down into who you are and your purpose in life and then what you do for a daily basis. So my purpose in life I'm actually recently discovering and I believe my purpose is seeing the good in others and, and not only seeing it but making them realize the good mm. in them. And then on a daily basis I'm an engineer and I recently got my bachelor's in mechanical engineering at University of Pretoria and I've been working at ETA Operations in Silver Lakes for two years now. Now, Altus, when you mentioned the fact that you're an engineer, I think many people probably sat up thinking, wait, I thought today was going to be a story of, of spiritual life change and reaching into the city. And yet here you are, fresh out of university, you're in the world of the construction industry and you know, nuts and bolts and number crunching and problem solving. How did that get connected to the street store? Well, Joe, as you said, you know, nuts and bolts, number crunching and problem solving is you know, what engineers do, but actually we work with people a lot and mm. you know, the, the solving the people problem is an important aspect. Mm. And when you see a lot of homeless people, you start thinking of how can we solve the people problem and the disconnection between us and homeless people. You know, when I say us, I'm talking about people that you know, are not less fortunate. Mm. So how can we solve that connection? Because the problem is it's generalized. You know, everyone that is homeless, we see just they're all homeless people, but actually there's a story behind each person. Mm -hmm. And to solve that connection and listen, be able to listen to their story while helping them, mm -hmm. that is where, you know, as a group of engineers that, that did the City Change Leadership Program, heard about Street Store and we started, let's not reinvent the wheel and rather join this initiative. Mm. I think already you've mentioned one or two things with regard to homeless people, with regard to some of the plights in our city of Pretoria. Uh, but also just the idea that there are a whole bunch of different people getting together to give of themselves to this. So we've already touched upon some of it, but give us the nutshell version of what is the street store all about and what's its outcome and, and what does that look like? So basically this street store is where you get the opportunity to give clothes to people that are homeless or less fortunate. But instead of just giving clothes, you are able to speak to them because when you see homeless people across the street and you help them, you give them food or something, you never have that time to connect with people. Mm -hmm. So what Street Store allows you to do is pers on a personal level connect with someone and being able to minister to them afterwards, pray to them, wow. give them hope and just express your love towards them because everyone that is homeless is indeed a person and it allows them, um, like everyone, wants the sense of belonging. So instead of just helping someone, you help them and listen to their story. And as soon as you listen to their story, mm. you get a sense of belonging and they get a sense of belonging as well. Wow. Yeah, it almost feels like uh, when, as you're speaking, there's, there's a very practical element. The street store tries to alleviate some of the need in our city. People are without basic things like clothing and yet we're using very personal language like stories and, and reaching into people's lives. How have you seen, I mean, our country is definitely one um, at our worst at times, we are a country that's divided between very strong lines, economic lines and sometimes racial lines. The street store often brings a lot of these lines together. W what did you find with regard to that just line of thinking in this year's street store and, and how did you see it play out? Yes, yeah, so well definitely it, it, it breaks you know, genders, it breaks racial um, discrepancies, it, it, it allows you to you know, connect with someone on a different level where you don't care if you're a male or female, you don't care if you're white or black or whatever color, you don't care if you, you know, here as a refugee or if you, you know, so there's, there's a lot of people and there's a lot of stories that, yeah. that I can tell you about. I mean, we were only a small, small street store that we impacted about a thousand, actually 918 people to be exact wow. on that day. Street Store is a global movement, it's also a countrywide one, but you were there on the day, you were on ground level operating and, and giving of yourself. What was maybe one moment that really captured your heart and you take away as a, as a moment of, of just personal blessing? One story in particular that stood out was about Stephen. I asked Stephen, I was helping him look for clothes and <clears throat> as he got there he said, you know, he wants cosmetics, you know, he wants to be clean because he, he, feels, he feels dirty. So we, we went and there was there was soap there, there was cosmetics too, you know, so that he can, 
he can clean himself up because when I asked him, so why do you want to be clean? But we all want to be clean, but he said, no, he wants to go for interviews. So I asked him, okay, now figure out more where he come from. And he told me, no, he, he was busy studying in Dubai for pharmacy and then his, his father passed away that was funding his studies. So he came to South Africa in the hope of you know, beginning a new life and he had a lot of passion for food. So his passion changed to, to food and he, he loved to become a chef. So he started working in Cape Town and then he lost his job there, he moved to Durban, he lost his job there and he came to Pretoria and in the hoping to become a chef and get a job here. And he said that on his way to street store, he actually, he got mugged, he lost his phone and he was still there and he's got so much smiles and hope and it is amazing just to see how much hope he still has. I think it's, that's so true. Actually, exactly what you said at the end there is that we often pass by people, all kinds of people in our city and it's only when we get to hear their story that the, the empathy is born and the connection is born. Maybe as a last question to you in your own story, um, we said at the beginning, you're in the engineering field, I think very often professionals of, of different stripes can feel they're locked into this one journey. And I'm just going to make my salary and look after myself and my family and that's pretty much it. And yet you feel that you've discovered more than that. God has called you to more than that. Um, how would you maybe encourage other people that are on that path of, of being in the workspace, being in the marketplace, but still trusting God for their ministry and their calling? What would you encourage them with? Well, I would say stop thinking about it and start doing it because everyone has a passion and everyone has a vision and whatever it is, you've thought about it for so long, why don't you just start doing it? And that's what I learned in the City Changes Leadership Program is you need to start acting on what you're thinking about. And, you know, that's, that's one thing I would say um, to give, give back to people. It doesn't matter from what profession you are from, we are all human. Yeah. in the end and what you have achieved and what you have done doesn't define necessarily who you are and it doesn't belittle someone else who has done something else. Sure, that's brilliant and I'll just, I want to say thank you for your obedience to God and to his kingdom. Um, God acts when people are willing to take up the calling um, of his heart for the city and I think you are such a shining example of that so let's keep on trusting together that Street Store will just multiply out stories of life change but let's also trust that through your story, other people will be stirred to say, if God has a calling and if he's got a path for me, I'd have the courage to take that up. So thank you so much for being with us, Altus, and we're excited to see the rest of your story play out. Thank you.